Hi, fourth grade, it's Miss Flores here, and I'm gonna to talk to you about less math lesson 101. Crazy. Um, so this one is called, um, we are talking about formulas, okay? So we have a few different formulas that we have been using, um, and we have our area formula, and we have our perimeter formula. So what is a formula? A formula is basically just letters that you're gonna to use to plug in numbers to figure something out, okay? Um, so for example, for our area, we all know that it's gonna be your length times the width, okay, for your formula, um, for to solve an area. And so you would basically plug in the numbers for your length and your width. So our formula would be A equals L times W, okay? Um, and then we have our perimeter, and we know that our perimeter is going to be all the signs added together. So for our square, we know that we have two lengths, okay, the top and the bottom, and then we have two widths, which is the sides, okay? Um, and so you would do P equals 2L, because you would multiply them by two instead of writing the numbers twice, and you would add that to 2W, which means that the width would be also multiplied by two. All right, I'm gonna show you some other um, examples of formulas that we are gonna talk about today. All right, in your book, they give you some different formulas, okay? Um, so they have from feet to yards. So that means for every F would mean feet equals three times Y, okay? Um, so that means like for any yard, you have, you would have to multiply by three in order to get the feet, okay? So this is feet and yards. This is all in your book as well. All right, the formula they give you is quarts and gallons, quarts and gallons. Okay, that means to figure out quarts, you can multiply four times any gallon and you figure out quarts, okay? So basically anytime there's a relationship between two quantities is constant, it can be represented with a formula, meaning that if we know how much something goes into it, how many times, we could always make a formula for it, okay? Um, and then it goes on to give you other examples like total cost, original price, sales tax, profit for loss, total miles, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So we're gonna go through example one together. All right, example one says, a hat cost $27.90. The tax is $1.40. What is the total cost of the hat? Now, we also had a formula for total cost, okay? The formula they give us was T, which is our total cost, and our original price plus sales tax, okay? So if the hat costs $27, okay, which is our original price, $27.90, and the tax was $1.40, what is the total cost, okay? That means that we're basically plugging in these numbers into our formula. So let's work this out together. And they work it out for you in the book as well. Zero plus zero is zero. Nine plus four is 10, 11, 12, 13. Seven plus two is nine. And two plus zero is two. So then you get $29.30. All right, let's look at example two. It says Lisa spent $25 on supplies to make 20 bracelets. She told them for 30, she sold them, sorry, for $35. What was her profit? So since we have those words profit, and we have the sales and expenses, that means we need to find the equation, okay, that it makes for us, which they give it to you in the example. So the equation is profit equals sales minus expenses, meaning sales is how many she sold, which it tells us she sold um, 30 for $35, okay? That means let's start with $35. Then it says the expenses, that's how much she spent, and it says she spent $25. So we would subtract 25 from 35, and then we would get our profit, okay, how much she made. So 35 minus 25, let's work that out. 5 minus 5 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. So she actually made $10. 
And then it says, suppose Lisa sold the bracelets for $20. What would her profit be? Okay. Um, so instead of, of doing it for $20, um, that means that she would have sold it for $15 less than this. Okay. She would have made $15 less. So that means she would have lost $5. Okay. She would have lost money if she sold it for less. All right, example three says Ed's car holds 20 gallons of gasoline. The car dealer told him he could drive 17 miles on each gallon of gas. How far can Ed drive on a full tank? Okay, so they give us an equation. The equation they give us is T for the total miles equals G, which is our total gallons of fuel. And then we multiply that by the miles per gallon, okay? So this is our equation that we're going to plug it in, okay? So we don't know the total miles they drove because it says that the car holds 20 gallons of gas, okay? So if the car holds 20 gallons of gas, that means we're going to plug that in for our gas. Then it says um, that he could drive 17 miles on each gallon. So we don't know how far he can go. Okay, so we're going to multiply 20 times 17. Okay, I'm going to rewrite that here so that it's easier. We know 7. Um, we could actually just multiply 7 times 2, which is 14. And then 2 plus 1 is 3, so 34. And then we add our 0, and we get 340 miles. All right, lesson practice A says Genevieve drove for four hours at a speed of 50 miles, okay? So for four hours, for 50 miles, okay? Um, how far did she drive? So basically, we want to know the distance of how far she drove. So that means we could multiply her speed. By time okay and that is the equation that we're looking for this formula is what we're looking for so you need to figure out what the question is asking us it's asking us for the distance we want to know how far she went and we know how long it took her the time and we know how fast she was going okay so now we can work this out 50 times 4 we're gonna hang out the 0 so 5 times 4 is 20 we add another 0 so that means she went 200 miles total. All right, let's do B. B says at the end of a week, one store had expenses of $1,000 and sales of $800. What number would represent the week's record of sales and expenses? Okay. So basically what they're asking you is that, um, the expenses were $1,000. So that means they spent out of their own money. Remember that profit equals sales minus expenses, okay? Um, and so in this case, if we were to figure out the profit, we would have to subtract our sales, which is only $800, and their expenses were $1,000. This is actually gonna put us in the negative. So that means they lost negative $200 because their expenses, that means it cost them more to make something than it did to sell something, okay? So that means that we need to just evaluate what the question is asking. All right, let's do lesson practice C. Lesson practice C says Mary Beth ran six kilometers. Okay, six kilometers. How many meters did she run? Okay, so we know that for one kilometer, we have a thousand meters, which means that we would need to multiply our kilometers times 1,000, okay, in order to get that. So we need to do 1,000 K equals our meters. All right, so in this case, we have six. So we're going to multiply 1,000 times six. Okay, we can add the zeros one, two, three, and six times one is six. So that means we get 6,000 meters. 
All right, lesson practice D. A car can be driven 95 miles on five gallons of gas. How far can it be driven on one gallon of gas? Okay, so it's basically wanting you to come up with an equation. So we know the total equals gallons times miles. Okay, um, and since they give us the gallons of five gallons, okay, and we know that they drove. 95 miles total so this would actually be here we need to figure out how many gal how many miles they get for how many miles they get for five gallons specifically okay so that means in order to find this in order to find m we need to do the inverse operation okay so we need to do the opposite of multiplication which is divide all right so we need to do 95 divide by five five goes into nine one time Five times one is five, so nine minus five is four, and then five comes down and makes it 45. Five goes into 45 19 times, or sorry, nine times. Nine times five is 45. 45 minus 45 is zero. So we get 19 miles. All right, that's it for today. We are gonna, I'm gonna go over a few problems for you on your homework. All right, we're gonna do number six, okay? It says, if a car gets 15 miles per gallon, how many miles can the gar car go on 15 gallons? Write a formula to solve the problem. So again, we're gonna use that total distance um, equals our gallons times mile, okay? Um, so if they go 15 miles per gallon, and they have 15 gallons, that means we're just gonna multiply 15 times 15, okay? Five times five is 25. Five times one plus two is seven. Five times one is five, and one times one is one. So then we add them together. We get five, we get 12, and two. So we have 200, 25 miles that's the distance they're going to go if they have 15 gallons and they have 15 miles per gallon all right let's do number nine let's change the improper fraction nine over four to a mixed number okay so this is the improper fraction that they give us so what we need to do is we need to divide nine divide by four four goes into nine two times and we get eight Nine minus eight is one. So remember, this number becomes our whole number, and this number becomes our numerator, and this number becomes our denominator. So your answer is two and one fourth. All right, let's do number 13. It says on Saturday, Jacinda played outside for one and a half hours and played board games for two and a half hours. Altogether, how much time did Jacinda spend playing outside and playing board games? So what you need to do is you need to add. So we're going to add one and one half plus two and a half. Okay. Remember, we add our whole numbers, one and two, which gives us three. Then we add our numerators, one and one, which gives us two. And our denominator is two. So we know that when the numerator is the same as the denominator, it equals one. So now we have to add three plus one equals four. So she spent four hours. Right, we're gonna look at number 14. Number 14 says round eight and 21 over 100 to the nearest whole number. So we know that this is in between eight and nine, okay? So now we need to look at this numerator. Is the numerator less than 50? It is, so that means it's going to go stay the same to eight. All right, let's do 29A. 29A says how many square feet of shingles are needed to cover a rectangular roof that is 40 feet wide, if it's a rectangular roof and it's 40 feet wide 
and 60 feet long. So we need to figure out the area, right? The area, because we need to know um, the square feet that they need to cover the whole thing, okay? So we need to multiply 60 times 40. Six times four, six, 12, 18, 24, and we add two zeros. So we get A is 2,400 square feet. All right, what about B? He says, is this problem about area or perimeter? How do you know? Okay, it is about area because we need to know how to, they're asking, about all of the space that's in between. They're not asking about the, the outside of it. They're asking about all the space in between. So that's why it is about area. And last but not least, we're gonna do number 30. It says Troy walked two and one fifth miles on Monday. He walked three and four fifth miles on Wednesday. How many more miles did Troy walk on Wednesday than on Monday? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to subtract. Three and four fifths minus two and one fifth. Okay, so we subtract the whole numbers. Three minus two is one, and we subtract the numerators. Four minus one is three, and we carry over the denominator. So your answer is one and three fifths, and our label is miles. All right, fourth grade, I hope this was helpful and I hope that you are continuing on to do your best in all that you do. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye.